It is good to be criticized because that means you're doing something good. And you cannot really please anyone. People will talk, people will say things. Whether you do this, people will say things. I mean, regardless of what you do, there are people that will just say negative words. And for us to, to dwell on those things will only be a waste of time. Let the outcome speak for itself. Because eventually, if people see the outcome then, uh, they will know and they will probably appreciate and benefit. So, uh, we are faced with, with a challenge. It's like Israel, you know, the whole world is against them. The narrative is turning against them. When they would attack October 7, the whole world sympathizes with them. But when they started uh, unceasingly bombarding Gaza, then the narrative is turning against them. And when you read in the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, that says, uh, though the whole world go against you, I will fight for you. When, when, when it says the whole world, where do you see the whole world being represented? There's only one organization that the whole world is being represented, and that's the UN. And recently, even the Secretary General of UN criticizes what is being done by the Israeli Defense Forces. And recently, they voted 100, I mean 270 for a ceasefire and uh, the entire Arab world is up against the nation of Israel. So a tiny nation, brothers and sisters, very, very tiny. But uh, regardless of what the UN says or politicians, God will fulfill his word. And God is not uh, uh, beholden to any individual. God is not going to submit himself to any human opinion. It's the Lord. He is a sovereign God and he will fulfill his word. So when we are faced with a challenge, I always say that is when you separate the men from the boys. The mature to the immature. Because others, when they face a challenge, they chicken out. They turn their back because they, 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 don't, they don't want to face it squarely. Without you knowing it, if you want to elevate your faith, you need to be challenged. You don't have to face the same challenges from the day you started serving the Lord 30 years after you're still facing that same challenge. It only tells me that you have not grown and mature. So the more you aged in serving the Lord, the heavier the challenge is going to be. And not to defeat you, but to make you more mature, stronger in the Lord. Your faith and relationship with God deepens. And then you see things not in a tunnel vision, but in a broader perspective. Because... When you see things, you don't see it from the eyes of a man. You see it from the vantage point of the heavenly wisdom of God. You see it as God sees it, brothers and sisters. So don't, don't murmur. Don't complain. Take the challenge. Face it. Don't, don't chicken out. Don't run away. Don't be a coward. Face it. Because you have a big God. That will always be there for you. And he will never abandon you. So what happened that day is, is, a, is a, a blessing for me. It's, it's, and then that night I, I dreamt. You know, I dreamt that it was finished. The church was done. It was beautiful. I was even amazed how it was accomplished. I said, wow. <laughs> 
So, and then I feel, I feel relaxed because the Lord have given me an assurance. How, when? Hop to Him. Amen? Because the Lord is going to meet you halfway. You do your thing, then God will meet you there. At least the Lord sees that we make an effort. Remember when, when, when the temple was being rebuilt, the second temple, Zerubbabel faced, you know the word, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. That was a prophecy uttered by the two prophets to encourage Zerubbabel. Because when he saw the rubbish, the pile of rubbish before him, you know, he went back to Jerusalem to build the second temple. Of course, the emperor gave him enough resources to rebuild it, but he is a lone man. That's why he needs the two prophets, namely Haggai and Zechariah, to be the source of encouragement. So they prophesied to Zerubbabel, you know, and, and God says, do you see this mountain? It's not really and literally a mountain, brothers and sisters. It's a pile of rubbish. The remains of the destruction done by Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, so it's a Herculean task on the part of Zerubbabel. Therefore, he needs to be encouraged. How he will accomplish it? The prophecy said, not by might. Nor by power, meaning it is not your own strength that you're going to accomplish this, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why when you don't receive any encouragement from, from people around you, and, and you're highly criticized, there will be a voice coming from the Lord, a dream and circumstances to stir up your spirit. That is going to be accomplished as the Lord desires it to be. And therefore, I'd like to encourage you, don't put God in a box. If you are betwixt, between the devil and the deep blue sea, if in front of you you're faced with the Dead Sea, at your back is the Egyptian uh, hordes running after you, then believe, brothers and sisters, that as the God who parted the Red Sea, brothers and sisters, in the Old Testament is going to be the same God that will make a way in your life when you think there is no more way. Hallelujah. Because if God will defend Israel, will He not defend you? If God promised so many things to the nation of Israel, will He not accomplish also the promises he uttered for the bride of Christ. As Israel is a tiny, tiny nation, so is the church. It's not big. It's a tiny uh, group of believers because not many loves the truth. People would like to be uh, titillated or they want their ears to hear something that will feel, that make them feel good. They don't like doctrines or teachings. They don't like to study the deep things of God. They have no desire for those things. But if you are a spiritual believer, you want to know more of God. You want to plunge yourself into the deep things of God. You don't just want to walk on shallow waters. You want God to bring you to deep waters. Hallelujah. And therefore, it's, it's good to be challenged. It's good to be, to, 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 you know, and when you give, it's good to give that hurts you. You have your own personal need and then you still do things for the Lord. That is doing something, brothers and sisters, out of your own comfort zone. You are now leaving your comfort zone. You have your own need and yet you step up a step of faith and believe, brothers and sisters, that I am doing this for the Lord, for my God. I know I don't even have to ask anything from Him. By the law of attraction, hallelujah, he will fulfill his word. For whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. So it's a message for all of you. Brothers and sisters, don't whine. Don't complain. Don't murmur if you're pushed to the wall. Brothers and sisters, look up and believe that the God who brought you there 
is the same God that will lead you through. Amen? So, let's just be thankful to God. I have stopped complaining a long time ago. I just um, start thanking God. Amen? Just thank the Lord. Don't say it's difficult life. Stop saying that. I don't know why people would like to say ang hirap ng buhay ngayon. Stop saying that. I don't believe na mahirap ang buhay. I don't believe that you're, you're, you're living a difficult life. You're driving a car for heaven's sake. Amen? You, 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 you have a house to live in. So, and then you still say, life is difficult? Come on. Amen? Stop being ungrateful and start being thankful. A lot of people are in a much worse situation than us. Amen? So start being thankful and really appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Don't just sing the song. Live it. Hallelujah. Amen. And be happy. And the really, the, 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 the key to happiness is being content. If you're content, brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Hey, I'm happy. Praise the Lord. And so, God is going to do great things. If you elevate your faith, God is going to show you more. So, let's grow as a believer. Amen? It's not good that you have only spent years in church and have not really matured in your walk with God. So, don't tell me you've been here for 30 years. The question is, what have you, what have you become after those many years you have spent with the Lord? Did you learn anything? Amen? We should. Amen? Brothers and sisters, definitely. Because uh, those difficulties, trials that we have faced is God's way of maturing us, building a character inside of us, brothers and sisters. So, uh, we take cognizant of the fact that these things that's going on around us is a harbinger. It's a sign. It's a message from the Lord. I remember Brother Manam preaching the flashing red lights of His coming. So I hope and pray. I am just so surprised that there are still people in our church that can afford to skip Sunday. I mean, I am really, 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 wow, surprised. Imagine if the Lord comes today, where will they be? Amen? I'm really surprised. So, well, it's an individual walk. So be it. Sure walk. I did not fall short warning everyone. So if people ignore the warning, hey, it's your life. It's your walk with God. But it's my job to warn the people. It's my job to update the people. But it's your job and responsibility on whether you will take heed to what you hear. Praise God. So, I give all the glory and honor to the Almighty. I thank Him for really in His own supernatural way and unique way, He can really speak to you. Hallelujah. So, glory belongs to Him alone. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for today. I honor You. I thank You. I give You glory and praise. We bless your name, Lord, and we are thankful and grateful to the many things you have done and will still do in our lives, Lord. Father, our eyes, I pray, be opened. Ears, Lord, attentive to the promptings of thy spirit. I pray, Lord, that uh, the message that will be ministered today be a blessing to my brothers and my sisters. So, Father God, I invite your presence to be in our midst and may you start speaking and really touching everyone's heart today. So, Lord, we commit to you our service in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give thanks and pray. Amen. If you have your Bible with you, turn with me in the book of Joel, chapter 2.
Praise the Lord. Verse 21. Joel 2, 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beast of the field. For the open pastures are springing up. And the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Now, this is a prophecy concerning the physical abundance that God is going to restore to the nation of Israel. Be glad, and you, be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord, for He has given you the former rain faithfully, and it will cause the rain to come down to you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat. And the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. It's a metaphor of God's blessing to the nation of Israel. Now in verse 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. Now, if you will, can you? Here, you see four insects that's devouring Israel, and Israel here is being pictured as a plant. The planting of the Lord. They're like a plant in the field that's being devoured. And these four insects is none other than the four world empire. Alright? In the book of Daniel, the four world empire is pictured as four predators. Turn with me in Daniel chapter 7. And Jera made a, a good HD illustration. It says here in Daniel chapter 7. Now, Daniel chapter 2, it was the king who had a dream. Four kinds of metal, from soft to a hard metal. Gold, brass, silver, and an iron. It is in parallel with the vision that Daniel saw. It's the same as what Joel prophesied in Joel chapter 2. Daniel had a dream or a vision on his bed while on his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and telling the main facts. Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night and behold the four winds of heaven were stealing up the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. That's the Babylonian empire. I watched till its wings were plucked off. It was lifted up from the earth and made to stand up on two feet like a man. You can, you can also dovetail that in Daniel chapter 4. Okay, when the nation of Babylon was lifted up and then uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was taught by God a very painful lesson. He became like a wild man or a wild beast for seven years. And suddenly another beast, second like a bear. It, it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. They said, thus to it arise, devour much flesh. That is the Middle persian Empire under Emperor Cyrus. After this I look and three, another like a leopard. This is the Grecian Empire which sat on its back four wings. 
The four wings were the four generals of Alexander the Great who succeeded him when his empire was divided into his four generals. Ptolemy, Cassander, Lysimachus, and uh, there's another guy, uh, Antiochus, brothers and sisters. Four generals of Alexander the Great was illustrated as the four, uh, the four wings. The beast also had four heads, the same thing. That's the four generals. And the dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night vision and behold a fourth beast, the Roman Empire. Behold, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring and breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. It had ten horns. Now, if you look at Revelation chapter 13 and 17, all the power, all the wealth, all the might, the ferocity of all the three empires before this one was all incorporated into this beast system. The fourth beast, which is the Roman Empire. That is why, brothers and sisters, there is no human being that could rally the leaders of the world like the Pope of Rome. He's the only one. But my topic tonight or today is not about this, but what they did on the nation of Israel. And God promised that everything that they took away from Israel is going to be restored back to them. So go back with me in Joel chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Verse 25. All right, so in Daniel 7... The four world empire is portrayed like predators. Beasts, brothers and sisters, and Israel is portrayed as a ship. So vulnerable to these four beasts. Here in Joel, Israel is pictured as a plant being devoured by four insects. Joel 2.25 so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and shall be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Don't you know that Joel... And the rest of the Old Testament prophets' writings are all in the Quran. Did you know that? Yeah. Even the four Gospels in the New Testament is also in the Quran. The prophets, the writings of the prophets are all in the Quran. Even the, Pentateuch, even, uh, the Pentateuch or the five books of Moses. It's in the Quran. They believe that Moshe is a prophet of God. They believe that the prophets of Israel were all sent from the Almighty God. And why is it that they read all of these things and yet they hate the nation of Israel? Unless they are really blind. Amen? Praise the Lord of everybody. Are you with me? My people, this is not talking about the Arabs. When the Lord said, my people, this is not even talking about you and I. This is in reference to the nation of Israel. My people shall never be ashamed. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. How can you defeat a nation guided, led, protected by the Almighty? I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God. Amen. Don't you know how many Gideon fought? The 300 men that were with Gideon 
were engaged against hundreds of thousands. Brothers and sisters, and this war that is now about to spill over because the ambassador of Iran in the UN made a stern warning that if the land incursion to Gaza by the IDF will push through, they will come in. Brothers and sisters, they will come in. They will join the, the war. So all of this nation, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, these are all Muslim countries. And if there's one thing that the nation of Israel achieved, the two factions of Islam, the Shiite and then the other one, brothers and sisters, united themselves because now they have one common enemy and that's the nation of Israel. And Turkey, Turkey has a million foot soldiers. Turkey has many drone planes, more so than the Americans. And the Turkish are seasoned warriors because they were the last empire that the British defeated after the First World War, retake Jerusalem and hand it over to, to the Jews. The Turkish Empire lasted for 500 years. And Prime Minister Erdogan is saying, if they will start it, the invasion, we're going to come in. The Ethiopians, the Houthis, have already fired some rockets against the naval uh, boats of uh, the Americans. The Americans already shoot. We shot down by the and sisters two missiles coming from the Houthis. The Houthis are the Ethiopians. Iran, Turkey, Ethiopia are part of the five-nation confederacy that will be with Gog when they will invade Israel in Ezekiel chapter 38. Are you listening? So when this really spill over, just like that, if the Lord says lights, camera, action, that's it. It's going to be a spontaneous Brothers and sisters, war after the miraculous war, then follows the Ezekiel war. After the Ezekiel war, here comes Daniel 9.27. The Pope will shake hands with Israel and the rest of the world. And when that happens, say goodbye to this earth. And what is the purpose of this restoration? If the nations of the world are not reading the Bible, what is the intention of God restoring the nation of Israel? Here it is, the following verse, 28. This is the favorite verse of the Pentecostal people. But this is not promised to the Gentiles. It's promised to them, to the Jews. Of course, we benefited after the rejection of the Jews to the Messiah, we got the, the good news, the gospel. But this outpouring of God's Spirit is first promised to the nation of Israel. And apparently, it will not be fulfilled in the first coming. It will be fulfilled when the two prophets come. Why? Why? I ask you, if this prophecy was fulfilled in the days of the apostles, I ask you, was Israel restored as a nation? Do the years eaten by the four insects 
restored back to them in the times of Christ or they were still under subjugation by the Roman Empire. They're still under subjugation, isn't it? But the Lord said, I'm going to restore what these four insects have done to you after that, after the restoration, then this will happen. Verse 28, it shall come to pass afterward. After what? After the restoration. Question, why was this quoted by Peter in Acts chapter 2? Are you following me? This verse or verses was quoted by Apostle Peter when he was asked and mistakenly, uh, they, you know, they, 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 they thought that they were drunk. No, 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 we're not drunk. This is the promise God spoke to the prophet Joel. Did Peter commit a mistake? No. I don't say no. But the entirety of this prophecy is yet to be fulfilled. Because this is for the whole nation of Israel. And the whole nation of Israel was not present on the day of Pentecost. So let's read. Verse 28. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. When the Bible says all flesh, don't look at it as worldwide. When the Bible says all flesh, meaning irregardless, listen now, of your social status, whoever you are, whether you're poor, you're, you're rich, whoever you, all flesh. So God is not talking about the whole world per se at this juncture when Joel was prophesying this. But this is to the nation of Israel, and irregardless of your status in life, you are going to be filled with the Spirit. And then it was broken down. What's the meaning of all flesh? Your sons, your daughters. So no gender preference. Old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. So here, male and female, young and old. And then in verse 29 is the status in life. Your maid servants. See? Amen. Are you with me? That's why it says all flesh. But of course, after the rejection of the Messiah, the whole world benefited eventually. Following me? All right. Also on my men servants, male servants, and maid servants, female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens. Did this happen in Acts chapter 2? Wonders in heaven, blood and fire, pillars of smoke, the sun turned into darkness, the moon shall be turned into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Hey, this is the second coming. Because after the pouring out of God's Spirit, what follows is the second coming of the Messiah. Of course, we use the term second coming to the Jews. There is no such thing as second coming. Only the coming of the Messiah. It is us Gentiles who believes that the Messiah has to come as a suffering servant first and then later on as a king. So this is altogether... One stream of prophecy. From the restoration, the outpouring of the Spirit, and then the coming of the Lord. That follows, brothers and sisters, after the outpouring, and then He will unleash His might, His fury against the, against the people of the earth. It shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion, see? Mount Zion. In Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. The Lord has said, among the remnants whom the Lord calls. Wow, I like that. Why remnant? Because not all Jews will be saved. Only those that were elected by God. Political Jews will, will shake hands with the Antichrist. Even some of the religious Jews will reject the Messiah. 
will reject the message of the two prophets. Not all of them. Only those foreordained before the foundation of the world will truly understand. Are you with me? And then let's go back to Isaiah 60. Where we stopped last Sunday. I'd like to finish the verses. Isaiah 60. Because it jibes with what I'm talking here. All right. Verse 10. Isaiah 60 verse 10. The sons of foreigners shall build up your walls. How, it, how will it happen? That the sons of foreigners shall build your walls. <laughs> wow, this is a nice verse. Foreigners, strangers shall build a wall. Why? Because when God sanctifies himself and displays his power in behalf of the nations of Israel, the world will be like this. We better help the Jews. They are really the chosen people of God. Amen? Amen? Then the money coming from strangers will flow to Jerusalem and they will really help rebuilding the third temple. So I think what happened to me last Thursday is like this. A foreigner was used by the Lord. Amen? Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. So in your life, the same thing. God can use anyone. Hallelujah. Their king shall minister to you. Their kings shall minister to you. Are they doing that now? Almost everybody in the UN is up against the nation of Israel. So there are two battles going on now. In the halls of the United Nations General Assembly, there is a battle going on. Between a tiny nation of Israel being overwhelmed by the many voices of the Arab people. Even France of France is changing their, 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 their tune. Even Mr. Biden is saying, hold on a minute. But you know, I have heard the interviews by the generals, by the spokesperson. They said, we may delay, but we're going to go in. Because we cannot live side by side with this terrorist. So we're going to destroy all their military infrastructure. It's never going to be easy because it's going to be an urban battle. And they, they, there is a, 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 like a maze, M-A-Z-E, a maze of tunnel underneath. How in the world were they able to build that? Because Russia had been, I mean, Iran had been giving money, hundreds of millions of dollars to the Hamas. And when Hamas got elected, overthrowing the representative of the PLO, they became more popular than, than the PLO. You know, they, they have the budget and the aids coming from all these Western nations. How are they spending it? Building up their military capability. And Iran is training them. Brothers and sisters. Are you with me? Praise the Lord everybody. So these guys. And the, and, 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 and the shameful thing about it is. Their leaders are all in Qatar. In a five star hotel. Having a good time. While the poor Gazans. Can hardly have a decent meal and being bombarded by this barrage of attack coming from the IDF. So, there's a war, military war in Israel and there is a world war in the halls of the United Nations. The King of Jordan, some African most of Africa are also Islam, isn't it? So imagine that. And Islam has about a 
billion believers all over the world. All right. For the sons of foreigners shall build up your walls and their king shall minister to you. For in my wrath, I struck you. God judged them because of their disobedience. But in my favor, the gifts and the callings of God, they are without repentance. God did not abandon the nation of Israel. Don't believe in this theological teaching, replacement theology. What is replacement theology that the church now replaced the nation of Israel as the chosen people of God? That's hogwash. Don't believe that. Because Paul said, in the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but when it comes to election, they are beloved of God. So read Romans 11. They were chopped off. You were grafted in. Paul warned, don't boast against the original branch because if you being wild were grafted in, it is not impossible for God to graft in them back again. Being the original. Hallelujah. And the reason why they be, they're being restored back is not for material prosperity alone. No. In preparation for the enlightenment that their forefathers missed 2,000 years ago for heaven's sake. Amen. Finally, the chosen Jews will get to know their Messiah. What about pastor this Jews for Jesus? Well, Trinitarian. I'm surprised that Jews can believe in the Trinity. So Gentiles going to Israel, you know, holding a megaphone, preaching to the Jews, what do they receive? Mockery. Because it's not our role to convert the Jews. God is going to send two prophets anointed with the anointing of Elijah and Moses. The two greatest anointing ever given to a human being. In the Old Testament, they work separately. But for one brief season, these two greatest anointings are going to join force in tandem. How powerful will it be? Woo! Greatest show on earth. Amen. They can command the sun to stand still. No rain for three and a half years. Turn water into blood. Can call as many plagues as they, as they, as they want. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But in my favor, I had had mercy on you. Therefore, your gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day or night. That men may... One more thing before I forget. Do you see a Jewish synagogue in Saudi Arabia? I ask you. Do you see a Jewish synagogue in all of these Muslim countries? Hard Muslim countries. Do you see a Jewish synagogue? You can't. But is there a mosque in Israel? Yeah. So how can they say that the Jews hate the Muslim? Amen? The Jews, they don't hate the Muslim. It is the Muslim that hates the Jews. Amen. Because the Jews are a threat to them in their claim that they are the lineage of Ishmael, the rightful heir of the covenant. No, they are not. God may bless Ishmael, but his covenant was established on Isaac. That's why Arab nations are blessed financially. Amen? God gave them the oil. What, 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 is this? what more do they want? They are wealthier than the Jews, in fact. Are you with me? The royal families of Saudi Arabia can spend trillions of dollars just like that. They can buy 500 million yak. They can buy a Lamborghini gold-plated. Just go. They're living lavishly, the truest sense of the world, the word. Amen? What about the Jews? They don't live like that. Amen. 
So they just stayed on hate. It's the other way around, brothers and sisters. The Jews, they don't hate the Muslim. No. Because the Jews don't even convert any Christian to become a Jew. They don't teach that in the Torah. That you need conversion. No, it is us doing that and Muslim. But the Jews, they don't have a teaching like that. Because in, 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 the, in the teachings of Moses, no strangers are being forced to be converted to Judaism. But in the event that a stranger would like to be a part of you, welcome him. Because in the teaching of Judaism, you are not supposed to follow the Torah. You are not supposed to follow the teachings of Moses. You are to follow the Noahide law. What is the Noahide law? The law and the covenant of Noah. Because the Noah or Noahide covenant involves the Gentiles. The three sons of Noah, progenerators. Of the nations of the world. So all you need to follow is the Noahide law. You don't see a Jew converting a, a Christian. It is us trying to convert them. They don't care about your religion. Amen? Because they already know who they are. Are you with me? Praise the Lord, everybody. So these people talking nonsense. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't even know the teachings of Judaism. Because they don't really dig in. They just follow YouTube and all of this hula baloo that they hear without investigating. Take it hook, line, and sinker without really knowing the veracity of those information. Crazy people. I say that. We're living in a crazy world. Amen? Amen? Everybody believes whatever it is they, 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 they hear on YouTube. Oh my God. Lies can be presented beautifully. Alright. That man may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. Wow. Do they ask for it? No. It is because God displayed His mighty power in the midst of His people. Do you remember Rahab? The harlot? Praise the Lord, everybody. What did she hear? When the man, the spy sent by Joshua to spy out Jericho, she heard the news. We know what your God did to the Egyptian. We know what your God did to the Philistines. We know what your God did and we know we are next. How did the news travel? Merchants, business people, traders traveling on uh, camels. They bring the news. Oh, we were there. You know what happened? And what did Rahab do? Lay down his life, put his life on the risk, her life on the risk by... Inviting those two spies. And he said, if you come here again and you destroy the city, remember me. What, what, did, they, what did they tell her? You, 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 you put a scarlet thread on your window. So when we come and invade Jerusalem, Jericho, we know it's your house. What have become of Rahab? She became the grandmother of King David. She is included in the, in the royal genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Amen! One single act. She was immortalized. <laughs> Whoever reads the Bible are familiar of the story of Rahab the harlot. Imagine that. A, a prostitute all her life can be the progenitor. Brothers and sisters can be included in the royal line. And Jesus can trace his genealogy all the way up to Rahab, brothers and sisters. That's the God you serve. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. The wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in possession. For the nation and kingdom which will not serve you will perish. 
Oh my God. Did I say that? It's God. And those nations shall be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon. Here we come. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you. The cypress, the pine, and the box tree together. To do what? Hello? To beautify the place of my sanctuary. Coming from where? Lebanon. Do you think Lebanon will hand over their logs? Huh? The cedar trees and say to the Jew, oh, come on, Jew, you can have our cedar, cedar tree, our cypress tree. You build God your house, a house. Well, are they going to do that? No. They need to be fully convinced who the Jews are when God displays his mighty power on their behalf. <laughs> and then, hallelujah, Lebanon will open its doors. Hallelujah. Purin ang Panginoon. Now you spiritualize this and you see yourself in this movement of God. Because God can open doors that seem to be closed. Nothing is impossible to our Almighty God. If He wants to accomplish something, He can part the Red Sea and say, Come on, my children. Walk on dry shod. Woo! Hallelujah! Have faith in God. Not in men. Men are liars, but not God. He will keep His word. The glory of Lebanon shall come to you. The cypress, the pine, and the back tree together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. The third temple is going to be the most beautiful edifice on God's green earth. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. Do you see this in Haggai chapter 2 as well? Amen. I'll shake nations and the desires of nations shall come unto me. Silver and gold is mine. Amen. To do what? To build the temple of the almighty God. Also the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bowing down to you. That's why don't avenge yourself. If people criticize you, put you down, brothers and sisters step over you, they think you're a loser, they think you are no good for nothing, leave them alone. Because the moment God do exceedingly great things in your life, then they will be shocked. And they should have not say, said those things to you. Amen? They want to stab you on the back? Let it be. Come on. Make my day. Come on. You want to hurt me? You want to destroy my person? Come on. God said they will come bowing down to you. Amen? The enemies of Israel will realize, oh, we cannot defeat these people. How can you defeat these people whose Jehovah is God? Is their God. Amen? Their God is Jehovah. And those who despise you shall prostrate at the source of your feet. Alam niya, big sabi ng prostrate. They cannot fight. And they shall call you the city of the Lord. The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Who's going to say this? The enemies of Israel will say this. The nation that were against them will confess you truly are the city of God, the chosen of God. Hallelujah. Amen, brothers and sisters. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, is it true? God turned, their, turned his back to them. But now God says, rise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, and up until now they are being hated. That no one went through you. 
Ganun naman talaga, even in real life, di ba? When you're down, nobody's there. <laughs> and I'm glad nobody was there. Only God was there. Amen? So don't hold grudges or have a bitter feeling if no one helps you. So that your faith will lean on God, not on any human being. The mother of all disappointments is too much expectation. You don't expect, don't get disappointed. Amen? Then you'd be surprised how God operates. No one went through you. I will make you an eternal excellence. Eternal. How can you? There, there's this general who said, you know, Iran has a nuclear armament. They can just wipe out Israel just like that. In my mind, I said, that's what you think. The Egyptian did not. The Babylonians Failed? The Middle Persian? All of these empires, 3,000 years, they tried to annihilate the nation of God. And they survived and outlived those empires. Hey, if it is not yet your time, no one can touch you. Listen to me. If it is not yet your time, and if God has a plan in your life, no one can put you down. I say that not proudly, but through the word of God, brothers and sisters, when Jesus is still on a mission, no one can touch him. But when his time is up, there's nothing he can do but to submit to the will of the Father, isn't it? Amen? So I look at our lives as the, the same thing. As long as God has a purpose in your life, don't live in fear. Don't live filled with anxiety. Because God is going to accomplish His purpose in your life as He will to the nation of Israel. Because He said, you will, be my, you will have an eternal existence. A joy of many generations. You shall drink the milk of Gentiles. And the milk in the breast of kings. This is a metaphor. This is their material abundance. To make them wealthy? No. For the temple of God. You shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior. And your, and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. Now, listen to this. Look at the, look at the, the changes in the structure of the third temple. The comparison of how glorious it's going to be. Verse 17. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Wow. For the temple of the Lord. Okay? Instead of iron, I will bring silver. This is a, 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 a comparison of Value. Amen? Iron is of lesser value than silver, isn't it? Instead of wood, bronze. Instead of stones, iron. And I will also call your officers peace and your magistrate righteousness. Now when you come to verse 18, you are transported to the millennium. Violence shall no more, shall no longer be heard in your land. Not now. In the millennium, neither wasting nor destruction within your borders, but you shall call your wall salvation and your gates praise. Hallelujah. Amen. What is the wall? Protection. What is the gate? The entrance. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So they're not going to be a, a, a lonely people. No, 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 no. Because the wall of God's protection surrounds them. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord is my God and my refuse, the God in whom I shall trust. What 
but a mighty God we serve. And in the book of Psalms it says, He who guards Israel does not sleep, neither he slumbers. <laughs> he is watching over them. Hallelujah. Now let's see how ferocious the soldiers of Israel will become. Turn with me in Zechariah chapter 14. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. There are rallies all over the world against the Jews. Hundreds of thousands are marching on the street. A Jewish elder, a female, was murdered. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of emotions at the moment. I just hope and pray that the Israeli leadership will not listen to the voices of the world. It will only listen to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's read. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 1. The burden of the Lord against Israel. Thus saith the Lord who stretcheth out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of a man within him. Behold, I will make a Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness. Or a trembling cup. I'd like to go to the King James Version. This is not the King James. This is a new King James. So I'd like to read in my Scofield Bible. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 2. Why is it like that? All right. Okay. 12. Yeah. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. When you say cup of trembling, it's like this. Amen? Alright? This is a cup of trembling. If you hold Jerusalem, if you're a Syrian, whoever in the UN will hold Jerusalem, it's going to be like this. It's never going to be steady. It's going to make you feel uncomfortable. It's not Gaza that is going to be a trembling cup. It's not West Bank. It's not Golan Heights. It's Jerusalem. You know what the Hamas called their attack? The Al-Aqsa operation. Why do they call it? Because the name of their third holiest site is the Al-Aqsa Mosque. What's the solution that's being offered by the leaders of the world? Two-state solution. What's the meaning of a two-state solution? Jerusalem will be parted in two. Half to the Palestinians, half to the Jews. Netanyahu said, oh, no, 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 no. Jerusalem is non-negotiable. That's the eternal capital of the Jewish nation. So when you say Jerusalem, if they start saying, oh, come on, Jews, hand it over to the, to the Palestinians, the half of it, give it back to the Palestinians, the Jews, no, 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 no. Jerusalem is going to be a, a trembling cup. Did you not notice when the war happened to Ukraine, you don't see a lot of people around the world getting involved. Did you notice that? But this war is different. The Arab world is shaking. Amen. There was a conference, brothers and sisters in Egypt, and the Arab world was there. Amen. You see all the Arab uh, representatives in UN. Being, be, giving their speeches, we are behind our people, the Palestinians. They said that the, 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 the sin committed by the Jews is their occupation. Hello? Were you there 2,000 years ago? 
Amen? The reason you guys are there, because the original owner were kicked out by God. Because of their disobedience. And therefore, the land lies waste. No inhabitants, no rightful owner. It's like buying a property. And then you have squatters. Because the original owner was not there, isn't it? But when the original comes with a land certificate, from whom? From God. Amen. I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round. And who are the roundabout people? Hello? Jordan? Syria? Uh, I mean, yeah. Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt. And all of these nations are Muslim nations. Islamic people. They all hate Israel. For heaven's sake. Amen. But they are all on the edge. Everybody's on the edge. Amen. Like watching a thriller movie like you're, you're, you're at the edge of your seat. Woo! Hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah! And they shall be in the seats against Judah and against Jerusalem. And I will make Jerusalem what? A bird and some stone. And I tell you, the stone is not well chiseled. You know, if you carry a stone that's not chiseled, it will hurt you, isn't it? Are you with me? Sorry, baby. Pastor is too loud. All right. Amen. But they will carry it. Hallelujah. I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling, a burdensome stone for all people. And who's included? For all people. UN is carrying it. Amen. The nations, the Arab world is carrying it. They want to carry the stone. They want to meddle. They want to intervene. What will God do? All that burden themselves with it? Makialam kayo ne? Okay. What will I do to you? You're meddling, you're intervening. Huh? You want to put your hands on a cookie jar? Hallelujah. It shall be cut in. It shall be cut in pieces. God doesn't care what the Secretary General of UN says. Though all the people of the world, listen to this, though all of the people of the earth be gathered together against it. It's, God, it's almost God is saying, I don't care what you guys are saying. <laughs> Amen. I don't care what you say. I will fulfill my word. These are my people. I have promised them this land and definitely I'm going to give it back to them. None of you is going to take it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you happy? <laughs> so if God want to fulfill his word to you, though all your enemy comes up against you, they cannot withstand you. Believe that. Amen? Even if you're overwhelmed, you're alone. Oh my God, nobody cares for me. No! <laughs> if God is your friend, you can say what Paul said. Amen. If God is with us, who can be against us? Look at this. Verse 4. See how God will intervene. In that day, the Lord, I will smite every horses. Of course, in modern warfare, you don't use horses anymore, but horsepower. Tanks, airplanes, with astonishment. And he will smite rider with madness. I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Wow! Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo. You should read some testimonies that happened in the Six Day War. 
when the Egyptians were shooting their, uh, you know, their tanks towards the camp of Israel, it, it misses. But when the, 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 the Jews start shooting at them, always bullseye. And there were Air Force pilot testifies, uh, they were, you know, flying in the air. And when that guy looked on one side of his wing, he saw someone sitting on his wing. Could be an angel of the Lord. And the Palestinians were testifying, they saw giants. That's why they were running scared. <laughs> Imagine how many nations were up against Israel in 1967. Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, five nations against Israel. The war were done in a matter of six days. <sighs> Six days, it was over. Seven day, they are all in the synagogue praising God. <laughs> Hallelujah! Is he going to do it again? Most definitely he will. And the governors of Judah shall say in their hearts, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength. The Lord of hosts shall be of hosts their God. In that day, I will make the governors of Judah... I have never seen the political leaders of Israel right now being united. So they have now a, a, a uh, unity government. So even the oppositions, you know. So all the leaders are now one. They, they, they are all together in this. And there's only one thing that they're, they're saying. We're going to destroy Hamas. And when we're done, they will not have any more military capability. Because we can't live another day with them. On our backyard. How are they going to do it? Only God knows. Hallelujah. Look at how powerful the governors of Judah will be like. And that day I will make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire. You know what a hearth of fire is? Like a flaming torch. Have you seen a flaming torch? Okay, among the wood and like the torch of fire in a shift, they shall devour. Hello? Mr. Roshain, hello? King of Jordan, King of Syria, praise the Lord. Hello, everybody. You will be devoured. Are they reading this? This is also in the Quran. But they deny it. Am I against a Muslim? No. Against the spirit that leads them to kill the Jews for no apparent reason. Of course, the, re the reason is the occupation. But it's not their land. And God will prove it. That's his inheritance to the nation of Israel. And shall devour all the people round about on the right and on the left. Jerusalem. Here we go. Here we go. No Muslim, no Mosque of Omar shall be inhabited again in her own place. Just like in the days of old. Hallelujah. Even in Jerusalem, it's never going to be a divided city. It shall be inhabited again. Just like it was before. Because Jerusalem before, there is no mosque of Omar. There's only one religious edifice that stands. And that's the temple of God. They are the only religion in the world that doesn't have a temple of their own. Did you know that? They don't have a temple of their own. The Catholics we have, they have Protestant, Muslim, they have the mosque. Even the Hindu, they have their temple. But the Jews, they don't have. Where do they go? To the Wailing Wall. Okay? On the back of that wailing wall is the spot that the Solomon's, Solomon's temple once stood. was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, rebuilt by Zerubbabel, uh, re renovated by Herod, destroyed by the Romans for 2,000 years. It has never been restored back. That's why there has to be a war. 
Do you like killing, Pastor? No, sir. But the Bible predicts it will happen. So how can I fight prophecy? Because prophecy doesn't need your approval. It doesn't need your imprimatur for it to be fulfilled. No. It will be fulfilled whether you like it or not. Because it's the word of God. Amen? For their 2,000 years, they have no temple. And this Protestant say, oh, God doesn't need any more temple because the church is not the temple of the living God. Of course, spiritually. But where do you think Jesus is going to reign and rule for a thousand years when he returns? Not in a palace, in a temple. That's going to be his seat of power. That's why it's going to be built. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. They shall devour. Now look at this. Okay? The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah. Why the tents of Judah? Because this is a warrior tribe. Hallelujah. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day, the Lord shall defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he that is feeble. Come here, Jera. Come here, come here, come here. You two guys. For example, Enoch is the feeble. Okay? The, the, the weakest among them will be like David. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, 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 the weakest soldier or, you know, the most feeble, the most lampa will be like David. Okay? And the house of David will be like what? Will be like God. So if you have these two anointing, God gave to his people. The house of David be like God. The ha- he that is feeble be like David. How are you going to defeat that? For heaven's sake. Amen. Amen. Come on, God. Thank you, guys. Don't you know how the Bible describes the 600 soldiers of David? Oh, my God. Read the kings. Read Samuel. There were... Swifter than, you know, some of the swift, swift, swiftest animal. You know, their, their face is like a face of a lion. Because they are a seasoned warrior. 600 men, loyal men, behind David. And the house of David shall be as God as the angel of the Lord before. I will, I will end with two verses. It shall come to pass in that day. I will seek to destroy. I did not say this, Jera. All the nations that come against Jerusalem. I hope they are hearing me. They can read this. So what is God trying to accomplish? It's here in verse 10. This is the entire reason in verse 10. After the war, after all of this thing, then the two prophets will come and God said, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall mourn. Oh my! They shall mourn. And look at me as the one they have pierced. When the two prophets come, and they will be enlightened. My God, there will be great mourning in Jerusalem. And they will realize, oh, no. He that was crucified by our forefathers was our long-awaited Messiah. How in the world did we miss it? That's why Paul said, blindness in part happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles began to come in. Romans 11, 25. Then verse 26. When the fullness of the Gentiles become in, then shall all Israel be saved. For it is written, there shall come a deliverer from Zion and will bring redemption to Israel. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Church, how close are we? I tell you. We are very, very close. Very, very close. Because this thing, if this spills over, 
It's just like an... Amen? Once it starts, once Iran comes in, once Turkey comes in, once Russia comes in, wow! It's over. We're going home. Hallelujah. And you may say, so why do you still need to build a church? Well, I would rather use the money for God. At least when, he, when, he, when I reckon with him and ask me, where did you spend the millions? Lord, in your house. I'm not guilty. I did not even beautify my house, Lord. You see, I still have to repair so many leaks in my house. But I would rather see your house first being finished and beautified. Not mine. I am, I am contented sleeping. You know, I know how it is to have nothing anyway. Amen? You know, when we were pioneering the church here, after Mount Pinatubo, where, 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 where was I sleeping? On benches. I opened my rev, no food, only water. I cook in a flat iron as I testified. I know how it is to be hungry. But did I complain? Did I run away? No, 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 no. <laughs> 35 years of ministry. I hope that's more than enough to prove to you what we have, church. Amen. This is the ministry, not mine, but of God. And he will prove it like he will prove the nation of Israel. And I have seen many that have criticized this church, our ministry. Where are they now? Amen. Many years ago, they said, oh, the, the, the ministry of Angeles will go down. I did not say anything. Am I happy that they are gone? I'm not. But it only tells you if this is the ministry of God, you better not say anything against it because you will find yourself fighting against God. You may criticize me, but not the work of the Lord because this is not mine. This is the Lord's ministry and you will reckon with him. Amen? So don't fight Israel, brothers and sisters. I, I, I see some of, you know, used to be a friend of mine and say, we rally behind the Palestinian. I said, oh my God, you don't know what you're talking about. Church, yeah. It, it's hard to fight a people that God favors. It's already written in the Bible. So whoever is up against you, as I will say it again, your business competition, let them do their thing. Don't worry. Amen. Don't worry whatever they want to do. Destroy you. Destroy your business. Destroy you at work. Leave it alone. You put your trust in God. The God who saved you. The God who gave you His Son. The God, brothers and sisters, who will bring you all to eternity will never, never, never abandon you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And time and again, He has proven it. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. He will make His Word realize and come to pass in your life. The Word will be made flesh in your own individual lives. And you will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Woo! Hallelujah! Give the Lord a big hand of praise, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen! Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your promises. It will not fall to the ground. It will be realized. It will manifest. It will be fulfilled. And therefore, Father, we pray. Why should we worry? Why should our hearts be filled with fear and anxiety? Lord, when you display yourself to the nation of Israel... Your chosen people as a nation. Are we not also your chosen? Elected, foreordained before the foundation of the world? How can you even, and how can they even say that you will abandon us? No, Lord, we are engraved in the palms of your hands. So when we see difficulties, when we see trials, when we see challenges, we can rise up, hallelujah, Lord God, and say, our God, is bigger than our challenges. 
I, our God is bigger than our problems. I will not say my problem is big. I will say my God is bigger than my problem. So Lord, uplift your people. Bless your people. Encourage them, Lord. And may they have an unmovable, unshakable faith. So we thank you, Father, today. And into thy mighty hands, I commit them before thee. Believing, Lord, that what they have heard, O oh God, will inspire them, will quicken their hearts, set their hearts on fire, O oh Lord God, and will help them to live their everyday lives, Lord God, with an unmovable, unshakable, hallelujah, faith on fire, O oh God. And they will continue serving you with all of their hearts and with all of their minds, O oh God. We thank you, Father God, in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we give thanks and pray. Amen. Can we give the Lord a big hand of praise?